Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to this meeting today. Uh, it's my particular pleasure, as always, to uh, welcome Mrs. Mariam Rajavi. Uh, we always hold her in very high esteem here in the European Parliament and uh, indeed throughout Europe and the peace-loving democracies of the world. The very fact that I have heard this morning that there has been a complaint officially lodged by the Iranian embassy uh, naming Alejo Vidal Quadras and myself uh, for inviting Mrs. Rajavi here today we both wear this uh, objection as a badge of honor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was in uh, Iraqi Kurdistan uh, last weekend for four days uh, and had some very important meetings there which I will uh, describe to you in the course of uh, today's seminar. I want to start however by telling you that the majority of people who I met there, very senior politicians, leaders of some of the Sunni uprisings, the popular uprisings in uh, six of the Sunni provinces, uh, I also met with one of the grand muftis, one of only two uh, muftis of the Sunni faith. Mm -hmm. But I met with uh, leaders of many of the ethnic minorities, the Christians, uh, the uh, Shabaks, uh, and many other people, Shia uh, politicians. The general consensus was that uh, Iraq has fed up, uh, has become totally fed up with Nouri al-Maliki. Uh, no one wants to see him standing for election again next year on the 30th of April. Indeed, when he went recently to Washington, he was trying to persuade Washington that he should be allowed a one-year extension of his term of office. And Washington, who used to regard Maliki as their chosen uh, Prime Minister, President of Iraq, they said no you are not going to have an extra year in office. When he asked for F-111 jets and Apache helicopters, they said, no, we don't uh, give these kind of uh, armaments to people that we don't entirely trust. That was the underlying uh, principle. You know, for him to deny any responsibility or any knowledge of the massacre that took place in Camp Ashraf on the 1st of September is simply absurd. No one, as we have heard from uh, Tahar Bamedra and from uh, Colonel Wes Martin, who used to be the American commander of Camp Ashraf, no one could get within five kilometers of Camp Ashraf without being stopped by the Iraqi military. They had secure zones around Camp Ashraf even when there were only 100 people left there. And these hundred people were there with the agreement of the Iraqi government to negotiate the sale of the property that was their democratic right to sell. And no one could get within five kilometers of that camp without watchtowers, uh, checkpoints, Iraqi military stopping them. And suddenly a force of assassins dressed in the military uniform of Iraqi SWAT teams are able to penetrate this cordon of checkpoints carrying heavy weapons, explosives and to conduct this horrific massacre handcuffing people's arms behind their backs and then executing them abducting seven hostages and this all without the knowledge of Nouri al-Maliki he is in charge in his office of the interior ministry, of the military, of the intelligence services, of the police, and he says he has no knowledge of what happened. He doesn't know what happened to the hostages. Well, he is either an idiot or a liar, and I would suggest to you today he is both 
We now hold him accountable for that massacre. We hold him accountable for holding these seven hostages. We have demanded an independent international inquiry by the UN into what happened. There is no likelihood of that happening. Maliki today is in Tehran. I would think he is top of the agenda negotiating the secret deportation of these seven hostages, six of them women, to Iran where they will face certain torture and execution. I am sure he is negotiating with the mullahs to help him win a third election on the 30th of April next year because he couldn't possibly do it uh, unless he got the help of the mullahs. What we have to say today, ladies and gentlemen, to Baroness Ashton, to John Kerry, to Ban Ki-moon, it is time you were facing up to reality on this situation. No more appeasement. No more pretending that you are uh, listening to the Iraqi government and Nouri al-Maliki and all the lies that they tell. Demand these seven hostages are released now. Demand that there is a full independent UN-led public inquiry uh, into the massacre that took place and hold Maliki and those other murderers to account for that atrocity and for all the other atrocities that are taking place virtually every day under that regime. That is the first demand. So ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, my great privilege, first of all, uh, as always, to welcome again Mrs. Mariam Rajavi and to uh, give her the floor, Mrs. Rajavi.